Okay, we're back in session view. And I have uh, loaded up one of the, the default sets here. Same one we looked at a minute ago. Okay, so let's talk about uh, some navigation things that we need to know uh, when we're looking in or when we're working in session view. So uh, first thing that I just talked about, uh, these two tabs down here work exactly the same. I can navigate between them by shift tab, right? Uh, one thing I just did before I started recording and should probably point out is I made this area smaller. So the way you do that is you get this icon by sitting right on the light gray bar in between the bottom of session view and the top of the clip view. And then you click and drag and you can make it smaller. You can slam it all the way down to get rid of that. And if you do that, you can do that. You can get back by doing that. Okay, so that's how you can adjust that depending on how you're working. Now, remember, this is called the clip slot grid. This is all my clip slots. Um, I can move a clip just by clicking and dragging, just like in arrangement view. Um, I can option click and drag to make duplicates, right? We'll talk about that in a second. Well, let's talk about what just happened there. Let me just do that. So what this window is saying is that I drug an audio file into a MIDI track. And it's what it wants me to do is tell it, it thinks I want it to convert it to a MIDI clip, right? So uh, this is one of the killer features about Ableton Live is that it's able to analyze the frequency content of the audio file and convert it to a MIDI clip for us, which is really cool. But I don't really wanna do that because I didn't wanna convert that to a MIDI clip. I just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So I'm gonna say cancel and it's not gonna put that MIDI clip there. So option click and drag will get you a duplicate. We can also copy command C, click in a new uh, clip slot and command V to paste. I can create more clip slots by just dragging something to it. So if I just drag something down here, it's gonna make another one down here. I can just keep dragging stuff. It's gonna keep making clip slots down there. It's gonna keep making scenes, I should say. Remember a scene is this all the way across. And I can launch a whole scene from over here. And I can go between scenes just by clicking. I don't have to go in order. That's part of the great thing about this. Um, I can navigate around in here with the arrow keys if you wanted to. This isn't the most ideal way to work with the clip slot grid, but you can use the arrow keys and then you can hit return to launch whatever you're on. Let's just go through and launch a whole bunch of stuff using key commands. Um, also note what I just did is I hit the space bar to stop. Spacebar is the universal like play stop button for almost every single DAW I've ever worked with. Um, Spacebar means play and stop. Last thing I'll point out while we're here in the clip slot grid is when we looked at arrangement view, we looked at selecting parts of a clip and moving them around either accidentally or intentionally. How would we do that here? Using just the clip slot grid, we can't, right? We can move whole clips. We can, if we wanted to go into the editor, like we could go down here and select a part and then do something with it that way. Uh, or what we would actually do is adjust the loop region, but we'll get into that more later. Um, the thing to remember for now is we're moving whole clips over here. When we're in the clip slot grid, it's kind of all or nothing if you wanna stay strictly in the clip slot grid we'll learn how to get a lot more control over your clips once we go down into the clip window. Okay, so I think that's everything when it comes to navigation for the clip slot grid.